Hello everyone, welcome to Fishin' the podcast where we discuss Magic's most competitive tribe and help the whole community become better merfolk players. Most compassionate tribe. Most compassionate tribe. I actually like that uh, considering uh, the, 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 the weight of the topic that we're discussing today. Uh, 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 my name is Cody, uh, one of the co-hosts of this show, and you can find me on Twitter as at NotCodySmith. Um, and of course, of course, I couldn't do this without my co-host Matt. Uh, who's been very patient in dealing with uh, dealing with our absence? Welcome back to the to the uh, to the recording booth in the airwaves, Matt. Uh, I'm glad to be back. Uh, Going to be somewhat uncharacteristically serious tonight, but that's all right. It's just that kind of a night. Uh, all I can tell you is going forward, we are going forward, and I will be back to my half-assed, not caring ways. And I will troll Cody as much as humanly possible after the night. Yeah, and and I do appreciate your your uh, your you know taking this somewhat seriously. You know, we we, we have we have kind of a, a heavier topic tonight to kind of just uh, you know explain what's happened and and why we've been on such a hiatus and all that fun stuff. Uh, but you know, there's there's lots of ways that you can support us, which is kind of more important than ever, and, and we'll discuss why that is here in a little bit. Um, Please make sure to share this with your merfolk friends and uh, and you know that that one merfolk player at your store uh, besides you you know make sure to let them know um, rating the show following us on on YouTube or just anybody uh, who likes podcasts or magic in general yeah and and all those things are free you know liking liking our posts uh, sharing our, our videos with friends you know like the, that's all ways to sh- support the show for zero space bucks so we always appreciate all that free support that you can give us. Uh, now, if you want to, you know, you know, really want to commit to the uh, to to uh, half focused uh, merfolk decks that I play on stream, uh, you can become a patron at patreon.com slash fishcastmtg. Uh, you can go to Inked Gaming and uh, use code fishcast10 at checkout. That is a good way to not only, you know, you don't you don't have to buy one of our play mats if you don't want, but you, you can. But you, you know, should. You should because they're pretty awesome. And Ishtin did such a great job on those uh, play mats. Mm-hmm. So. You know, if if uh, if you do that, it really does cut us some money. So that's really great. Uh, and thank you to Ink Gaming for sponsoring us, and uh, as well as Cardamajigs, where you can get our our wonderful tokens with art from Ishton. So, again, thank you, Ishton. You're 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 killing it. <laughs> no, absolutely, absolutely. Ishton actually just had a uh, interview on uh, on the Hive Mind, which was really great. So if if you want to uh, listen to him talk about his art. And, you know, he actually t- does uh, discuss Merfolk at some length. So, uh, you know, go check out Ishton. He's super great on Twitter and on pretty much everywhere. He's, he's great. Um, we have a new patron. Ooh. We actually still have a few new patrons uh, that we've kind of been backlogged. So I do apologize. Thank you to our patrons. Oh, and uh, w- before before we go on, our Discord. Uh, come hang out in Discord. If you, uh, there's a link uh, in our, uh, pinned to our Twitter just stop by, hang out, talk about Merfolk. We have lots of fun in there. Um, so new patron is Chris Gibbs. Hey, yeah, Chris. So Chris, uh, Chris is actually... Clap, clap, n- clap. Yeah, not only is Chris a patron, he's also a Twitch subscriber and is there basically, uh, he and his wife, uh, basically every, every time I stream, he's there. It's crazy. Like, thank you so much for your support, Chris. It really does mean a lot to us. You know what time it is? Ooh, what time is it? It's time for is the random merfolk. Oh. I mean, you could have lunch, I guess. Uh, I've been watching a lot of Bubble Guppies. They have a time for lunch song. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I mean, if, if that's, you know, if you got guppies on the mind, you know, uh, lunch, lunch is very important as well. Yeah. It, but it's, t- it's almost 10 o'clock, so I don't know what kind of lunch you're having. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> in, in my house, if anybody says, what time is it? It's time for lunch because that's... Oh, my son watches. But anyway, random merfolk. Let's do it. Yeah, so Chris picked random merfolk 120, uh, which is actually the merfolk wizard token. Yay! Yeah, from Lorwyn. <laughs> it's a 1-1, one, one, and it's a merfolk and a wizard at the same time. And that's it. It's... <laughs> um, so we, we have our own uh, from Cardamajigs, uh, so make sure to go to Cardamajigs to pick up your Merfolk Wizard tokens for your EDH decks. Nothing uh, against Mark Pool, but our Ishton version's better. Yeah, Mark, no, Mark Pool, outstanding work, 
But yeah. Ishton, Ishton is, is, you know, where it's at. Uh, so I thought I'd talk about the uh, cards that make uh, this this token, and there are only three. Uh, <laughs> so uh, the first one is Stony Brook Schoolmaster, which is two and a white for a one-two Merfolk Wizard. And uh, whenever Stony Brook Schoolmaster becomes tapped, you may put a plus one, plus one, or sorry, you may put a one-one blue Merfolk Wizard creature token into play. So you tap it, you make a token. And there was much rejoicing. Can we get the sound effect of like, like a, um, like a whistle or like a yay, <laughs> like a slide whistle? <laughs> Pew! Yeah. Uh, <laughs> or no, better yet, how about the sound effect of uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail? And there was much rejoicing. Yeah. Yay. yay. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm sure I'll. I'm sure I'll do some digging. Um, the next one is. Or summer. just use me as the sound effect. I'm yeah. just as good as Monty Python. It's fine, fine. <laughs> slightly better. Uh, the next card is Summon the School, which is slightly better than Stony Brook Schoolmaster. And it is three and a white for a tribal sorcery, Merfolk. And it says put two 1-1 one, one blue Merfolk wizard creature tokens into play. Tap four untapped Merfolk you control. Return Summon the School from your graveyard to your hand. I think we've talked about this one uh, quite a bit on the show, and uh, I think we're both a huge fan of this card. Yeah, no, this is it's a really cool uh it's a really cool design like just, you know, being able to get it back and, you know, like at the end of your turn if you've got a couple of merfolk laying around like you're not doing anything with them anyway. You know, just get get your uh get your summon the school back and make a few more a few more uh, merfolk and in in a deck that you're using this, you're usually doing it for combo purposes. So, you know, mm-hmm. it's like, okay, you're you're going to make a billion of these and then you're going to you're going to, you know, do something with them like a uh, uh, low mage mentor to counter all their spells or something, you know, something crazy. Um, I think we both said this one is like, it's just super close, but just not there. Yeah. It's it's one of those things where like, if, if it were fixed in, in like any way, I think it'd be too good. So like, it's like, if it's an instant too good, um, if it costs one less, it's like just too good, you know, <laughs> like there's, yeah, <laughs> it's, but, but it's also been like a million years since I've played limited Lorwyn. So I can't remember if it was good and limited or not. I'm sure it was fine. Like, you know, four mana for, for two mm-hmm. bodies isn't, isn't, you know, you're not, there's, there's, there isn't a whole lot of rejoicing for that. But, but, but it was, a, it was a tribal format. So you probably have a ton of Merfolk available so you can get it back later in the game. Yeah, and that's kind of more the thing is just it's it's repeatable, and so you yeah. can just sit there and you can go, all right, make you know make two make two one ones, pass the turn, all right, end of your turn, I tap these merfolk, get this back, mm-hmm. and you can just kind of sit there and make a board. Um, the last yeah. card that uh, that makes merfolk wizard tokens is Benthicor, which is an elemental for six in a blue, and it is a five five. Uh, when Benthicor comes into play, you put two one one. Blue Merfolk Wizard creature tokens into play. Jeez, that's a mouthful. Uh, <laughs> tap two untapped Merfolk you control. Untap Benthicor. It gains Shroud until end of turn. It's a lot of text. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, Benthicor is cool, I guess. I mean, you know, if you're in Merfolk and, and this gets passed to you, then sure. <laughs> like I, I, just... I played a ton of Lorwyn. I do not remember this card at all. Well, that's probably because it's bad. Yeah, it's not very good. <laughs> but I mean, other than that, you know, Merfolk wizards are pretty cool. Uh, most Merfolk are wizards or shamans of, of some kind. But, you know, so I, I, I'm a big fan of this uh, of this token. And again, Ishtin's art uh, is is really cool. And with every passing year, I get more and more hopeful that we'll actually have a return to Lorwyn, even though I think it's going to be very, very different than Lorwyn we were went to before with wizards new kind of art direction. But I think we'll see it, or or at least something very very similar. Yeah, it'll be it'll be cool to see. Um, it might but, not be storybook, but I think it's gonna be like very tribally. When, whenever we go back, yeah, there'll be some there'll be some other angle that they take it on, or or maybe mm-hmm. they change the the uh, like the the setting just a little bit. Like it's not like uh, old English, you know, sort of fairy tales. It's like you know they could do like uh, like a like a. Um, maybe not Middle Eastern, but you know, like a like a Eastern Europe style, uh, you know, fairy tales, or maybe like Germanic fa- fairy tales a little bit more. I I don't know. All right, so uh, now that we're done talking about Merfolk Wizard tokens, uh, one one Merfolk Wizard creature tokens uh, <laughs> that you should just buy from us anyway. Yeah, you should just buy them from from Card Majigs um, because that's the that's the place to get good tokens uh, mm-hmm. and and great tokens with uh, Ishton's art. 
uh, we're going to talk about uh, something a little personal this week. It's uh, it's uh, going to be story time with Cody. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're not talking magic. Yeah, uh, you know, we, we will bring it back um, at the uh, the second half of this will be uh, how how the show is moving forward, because there's there's a there's been a lot of changes and there will continue to be a lot of changes. And uh, so it, it is the show isn't going away in any in any fashion. Um, but it is going to change how we have to do things because of just the nature of, of what happened. And, and over the next few weeks, we are tr- going to try to stay consistent, but we'll probably have to roll with the punches a little bit as well. Yes. So, uh, take the way back machine to Easter Sunday, right? I'm driving home from, uh, my sister-in-law's house where we, I had taken the kids, uh, to go and, and have Easter dinner. Um, uh, my wife, Jessica, uh, who's a, a patron of the show and, and a, a great you know, support for the show, uh, at least for me. Um, and just a great person. Uh, I've said many a time, I'm not Team Cody, I'm Team Jess. Yeah, yeah. That's, he, he doesn't like me. He's, <laughs> uh, he's, <laughs> he's, he's, uh, he's only friends with me, so you know, he can be friends with my wife who makes amazing lemon squares. Uh, that's 100% true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hashtag true statement. Um, so, so basically, my wife, uh, my wife uh, is in the Navy Reserves, and she was activated, and uh, she was sent to uh, Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. Uh, so she was there, and you know, it was Sunday. Uh, she so wasn't she, in trouble, by the way. She was there no, for like to work. Yeah, no, she was she was working. She wasn't imprisoned. <laughs> Great Lemon Squares. I feel that should probably be something we clarify here. Great Lemon Squares better IEDs. <laughs> they were so good, they were illegal. Yeah. No, it's not none of that. Um but so she was, you know, it was the weekend, it was it was Sunday. Um so she was uh she went with some friends and went hiking. They have little islands, you know, in the area that you can uh you know, you can you can rent boats and you can take them to these different islands and just go hiking and, and what have you. Um so uh she went out hiking with some friends and I, you know, I took the kids out, you know, to, to the sister-in-law's house for some, for some dinner and we're driving home and, uh, everything's going fine. And I get a phone call from some phone number that I don't recognize. It's a, like a Rhode Island number or something. And I was just like, whatever, I, I'm, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna pick this up. If they, if they need something, they'll leave me a message. Um, and a meet, you know, no message. So I was like, okay, whatever. And you know, it's a short drive. Uh, so it's like, well, I'll just check when I get home anyway. And then I get a phone call from Jessica's phone. And uh, it is, you know, when I answer, I'm like, hey, how's it going? You know, happy to happy to talk to her and all that. And uh, it's it's one of her bosses. And he uh, he says, you know, hi, uh, my name is, you know, X, Y, Z. Uh, am I on speakerphone? And I was like, of course, I'm driving. And he was like, take me off speakerphone. And I was, and you know, my, my heart dropped into, into my butt. Like, I just like everything, like, like, oh no, like what, like in the military, um, if, if a service member passes away, somebody like will physically come to you. So I knew that she hadn't died, but you know, when somebody makes a phone call like that, it's like, that's pretty heavy, you know? So, um, you know, we, I had about a four minute conversation with him and basically he just described, uh, in the very basic as terms, what happened, um, that my wife was hiking, uh, part of the trail broke out from underneath her and she fell, uh, between 30 and 40 feet. Uh, she broke both of her wrists, her left elbow. Um, and that was all they knew. And so I was like, okay, so what's going to happen? He said, well, we're going to keep you updated. We're not exactly sure. You know, we're still getting things figured out. Um, and, uh, so the next day, uh, I take the kid, you know, I didn't say anything to the kids. I called, I called my in-laws and all that to tell them what, what I'd heard. And, uh, you know, so everyone is really upset. You know, I, I hadn't told the kids or anything like that. I didn't want them to worry. Um, so the next day I get a phone call from her, uh, and she's like, oh, everything's fine. You know, I'm fine. Uh, I'm, I'm a little hurt. Uh, but you know, I fell and then I woke up in the ER and now I'm just here and I'm fine. 
And uh, so we talked for, we talked, uh, we had two about five minute phone calls. And uh, I think, she, you know, during that time, she was just in shock. So she just couldn't, she wasn't really processing uh, what happened because um, the next day I called uh, one of the uh, uh, maybe Southwest uh, family support service people. And I, I said, you know, I was like, Hey, you know, how's it going? And, and, uh, you know, do you know what, do you know what's happening with Jessica? And he said, no, what? And I told him and he was like, uh, what? (laughs) So when did, when did this happen? And I told him all everything that was going on with it. And, um, so he, he got me into contact and actually, um, a, a friend of mine that's still in the Navy knew, uh, one of the uh, doctors over in Cuba. So I talked to him and got more information. Um, and then it ended up being in the long... So this is Tuesday, or sorry, Monday. Monday and Tuesday, uh, it turned out that Jessica had been mislabeled as being in the Air Force. Um, so basically nobody in the Navy, except for the people that took care of her right then in Guantanamo Bay, knew that she was hurt or that anything had happened. Um, so, uh, I live in, uh, just outside of Oklahoma city and, uh, Jessica was taken to, uh, the Naval health center in Portsmouth, Virginia. Um, so I got, you know, I got things set up so that the, you know, my, uh, sister-in-law can watch my kids and I started driving and, <laughs> um, you know, all day Wednesday I'm driving and fielding phone calls from people. You know, my phone is ringing about once an hour. Um, Jessica at this point, uh, she, she'll call me and she would, she was just spaced out just, you know, what are you doing? And I'd be like, I'm driving. And she'd go, where are you driving to? To you. And she'd just go, Oh, okay. Well, I'll talk to you later. And then, and then that was it. And so, you know, just making phone calls, you know, her command was finding out, you know, on Wednesday. Um, and I eventually got there on Thursday, uh, fairly late in the afternoon and, um, you know, started actually finding out what had happened. So she did, um, she, she did end up, end up breaking both of her wrists and her left elbow. Um, she fractured her L1 and L2 and she also, which is in the spine for those who don't know. Um, it ended up being that her spine was not, uh, hurt in such a way that they needed to do any repairs. Uh, so that was excellent. Um, she also had no concussion which I find I found so hard to believe, you know, how do you fall that far and not get a concussion? She's pretty hard headed. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, you know, you know, don't let Jessica hear you saying that, but <laughs> so she, what, what ended up happening was the way she fell, um, the, the trail broke out from under her. She fell about five feet, uh, landed and then rolled down a very steep incline. So it wasn't like a direct fall. But 30 feet is still a, a distance that a lot of people don't live from. And uh, so even when I got there on Thursday and uh, that weekend, uh, she was still having trouble understanding that I was there. You know, so she would she'd wake up and she'd see me and she... Be- because of the medication, correct? Medication and just pain. You know, she was in a lot of pain. Um, she barely understood that she was in, in Portsmouth. She thought she was still in Cuba. And so she would ask me questions like, how did you get to Cuba? And I was like, I was like, no, you're in Virginia. And she'd go, I'm in Virginia. And I'd say, yeah. And she'd go, oh, okay. And then, and you know, she was in and out of sleep a lot because of just, you know, pain medications. And, you know, I'm sure that, you know, even though she didn't get a concussion, she was still a little rattled, you know, it's, uh, so, uh, you know, we end up taking care of her, you know, I'm, I'm there to take care of her, um, I'm basically showing up every day at 5:45 in the morning, and I'm I stayed basically every and this day. This is after like a 29 hour drive, right? Yeah. So the next day, I, I was I think I maybe stayed in until like seven. I, I didn't get there till about seven in the morning. Um, but so basically every day that I was there, I was there at 5:45 in the morning uh, because the surgeons would do the rounds at six. Uh, so I could hear what was going on. I didn't have to rely on her uh, unreliable accounts to tell me, Hey, this is what the surgeon said. Um, you know, this is what you have some medical experience, correct? For those who don't know. Yes. So, uh, I was actually in the Navy for eight years as a hospital corpsman. Um, I did mostly emergency medicine. Uh, I worked in ER. 
Um, I, I worked uh, in, uh, in an orthopedic clinic in a lab, and I, I currently, well, recently worked as a medical assistant for a local uh, health, uh, health clinics group here. Uh, and so I, I've, been, I've been in the health industry for about 10 years. So, uh, so I'm there, you know, just making sure that, you know, the cert, not that she would get any, like the wool pulled over her eyes, or I, I just didn't want her to consent to things that like, you know, she didn't know what was happening, you know, just because she was on a lot of pain meds and just, there was, you know, a lot going on. So, you know, it's just to have somebody there, you know, to advocate for you is very important. Uh, you don't, you don't want to, uh, sign things or, or say things because you you don't understand what's going on and you just kind of feel pressured to do that. So I just needed to be there to make sure that number one information was getting passed correctly and that, you know, Nothing really fell between the cracks. All right, so the weekend of the 27th, 28th of April, uh, we find out that Jessica's going to have surgery on Monday. So Monday, the 29th. Uh, and they said, you know, everything looks good. We're going to, we're, uh, you know, she'll have surgery at 7 in the morning. So I show up, you know, 545, so the doctors can come do their rounds. Uh, the surgeons come in and they take a look at her and say, look, everything looks great. Uh, um, she is third on our list, so she will have surgery at 10 a.m. Uh, 11.45 rolls by, and, and we're still sitting in her room waiting, and they, they take us down, and so she goes into surgery, ends up being around 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, so she's not even out of surgery until about 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, um, and she wasn't back to her room until about 7 p.m. Um, so what ended up happening was uh, on her her left wrist, she actually only broke a very small bone in her wrist. Um, it's a, it's a bone that's uh, was explained to me as wrapped in tendons, uh, so they they just don't they don't attempt to fix it, and so it'll either a fix itself or b it won't heal, and then they'll just have another smaller surgery to just remove the bone, and so so nothing had to be done to her left wrist. Um, she has a plate, screws, and pins in her right wrist. And she has two plates and screws uh, in her left elbow. Um, so these are, you know, she's gone through the surgery, and, and again, she was, you know, she's in a lot of pain. Um, she started going to physical therapy, and we've started the process of getting her home. Um, so she's going to be uh, continuing to receive care, um, and I'm going to be flying back out uh, here shortly to take care of her, you know, to bring her home because obviously she can't hold anything. And uh, there were a lot of problems where they wanted to send her to a rehabilitation facility. But the thing is, is she can't take care of herself. Um, she can eat on her own now and she can brush her teeth fairly well. Um, but, you know, if, if you can't move your wrists and it's on both of your arms, uh, you know, you, you can't you can't, she has no weight bearing. Uh, so she, she can't lift hardly anything above like her phone. Uh, so basically, um, they're, they're sending her home with me, um, so that I can drive her to her appointments, um, with a physical therapist an occupational therapist. She's going to be seeing a surgeon out here. Um, and it's, so I'm going to be continuing to take care of our three kids, uh, as well as, stay at home full time to take care of Jessica to make sure that she she's where she needs to be um you know help her uh, you know wash herself um you know do just do little things like uh you know when i was there one of the things that she needed help with a lot was just flipping her pillow and it's like what are you going to do are you going to call a nurse in every single time you want your pillow flipped you know, like the, not not that I, the the nurses there are great and they were very good to her, and they still continue to take very good care of her. It's just you know that you don't have that personal level of care, and so um, I'm uh, at least for about six months or so I will be not working at my job that I was working at, um, uh, which kind of leads us into the next part, <laughs> the, the second half, uh, the future of fission. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm currently working or looking for work uh, from home. I, I actually just recently graduated uh, from uh, University of Oklahoma, uh, sorry, 
OSU, not OU. Uh, so I'm, uh, I got my degree in healthcare administration. So uh, I'm applying for uh, healthcare coding jobs, uh, which basically just uh, it, it's uh, assigning what you know what the what the the person was seen for, so that they can be billed properly. And basically, uh, there's a bunch of hospitals in the area uh, where all of their coders work from home. Uh, so this would allow me to continue to work, but also be at home, so I can take care of her and drive her to where she needs to be, and and all that fun stuff. Um, so if if you if you know of anything, just let me you know send me a, send me an email. I can uh, send you out my resume and all that fun stuff. Um, but in the meantime, uh, that means uh, we're going to be able to do a little bit more content. And so uh, you know we're going to be jingling the uh, Patreon can a little bit harder. Uh, uh, Twitch subscribers and all that fun stuff. Uh, I'm going to be my my goal right now is to stream three times a week. Um. It might not be leagues because leagues cost money, and uh, <laughs> uh, so that it'll be one of those things where uh, you know we'll, we'll be do, we'll be working on streaming more, and I'll be able to put more time into editing and more time into uh, into you know getting all that content to look great, and you know like I said, just streaming more uh, means more content for you, which is great. Um, but at the same time, you know it's gonna you know we're gonna like I said. Uh, all of your support is really great. You guys have given us so much support. And like, honestly, I never thought that we'd get as much in Patreon and Twitch subscribers. Like you guys all have been so fantastic. Hey, hey Cody, if, if you don't mind me cutting in for a little bit here. Of course. Um, so we, we've lost a few Patreon subscribers and, and we absolutely get it. We've been on hiatus for a while uh, because of the situation, been very cryptic about what's been going on and things like that. Uh, Cody didn't necessarily want to, or I don't think he mind, but he didn't necessarily bring up the fact that he was going to, we were going to do a whole topic about this. And I asked him if he'd be prepared to do so. Um, mostly because again, not because we feel like we owe you anything, uh, even though we do, but I really just wanted to make sure that everybody kind of knew what was going on, especially because we are going to be jingling the chain a little bit more or the uh, can a little bit more asking for uh, donations. Uh, again, completely plan on working for it, not just asking for a complete handout. And uh, one of the things that we've always said in the past was we don't take money from this. Everything 100% goes back in the show or we do like tokens or, or giveaways for you guys. For the foreseeable future, until Cody gets back on his feet, uh, the money, all the money, will absolutely be going to him and his family to make sure that uh, uh, diapers and food, essentially. So, uh, again, until Jess gets completely home and settled, we are going to attempt to stay on our normal schedule as much as possible. But we please ask that you kind of bear with us a little bit. Uh, we're, we'll, we'll, we'll probably record on random days. Uh, to and again, it might not be every Thursday that we get out, but we're gonna work on it. But again, we're gonna get back to a normal schedule. And uh, again, if we can just ask, or if I can just personally ask you guys, uh, just if you have an extra dollar or two a month, ten dollars a month that you can donate or to add to your Patreon, that'd be very, very greatly appreciated. Um, when this initially happened. I know I donated some money to Cody's uh, GoFundMe. I encouraged everyone that I could tweet out to to do the same. Uh, and we'll probably be doing other little fundraisers like that as time goes on. So Yeah, and, and I, I do want to clarify, um, during this time, my wife is going to be paid, you know, so, uh, and, and along with Patreon stuff, uh, you know, and, and uh, I make a little bit of money uh, from the GI Bill uh, that they give us for like rent money and stuff. So we're not going to be uh, destitute or anything like that, uh, but it is it, it is going things are going to be tight. You know, we have three kids. And- L- losing a whole income of a two income family is <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's not going to be awesome. Let's just put it that way. So thank you so much for for uh, sitting through all this and uh, and taking the time to listen to us and we we you know. We love you guys and girls. Like you got you all have been so fantastic and and we did this before we had Patreon money. And yeah. we do it because we like to do it. And we have fun hanging out 
and we we have fun, you know, discussing and, and poking fun at each other, and we will continue to do it. Um, but your support is understandably. We started with no one listening. We're going to end with no one listening. <laughs> we're just gonna we're just gonna uh, just gonna go out like a like a black like a black hole just into nothing. <laughs> well, thank you, everybody. I was thinking more of a bell curve. Oh yeah. But... <laughs> okay, that makes more sense. Well, thank you, everybody, so much uh, for hearing us out. Um, remember that you can... uh, and real quick, uh, we have awesome tokens that Ishtin's done. Uh, we have some. Uh, we'll be having some giveaways. Maybe we'll run some auctions. Um, obviously, I know we have some uh, Patreon uh, gifts. Uh, anybody that donates will be getting some free stuff. So, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll make we'll make it worth your while as much as we can. Yeah, we're gonna. Uh, like I said, we're gonna we're gonna take some time to figure out how exactly we can help with all that. Um, but we will be trying to do as many token giveaways as we can. Um, and again, thank you all so much for your support. Uh, remember, you can reach out and talk to us about this or any other topic on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook is at FishCastMTG. Uh, personally, on Twitter, I am not Cody Smith. and I'm Matthew Baudil. Eight. Yep. And uh, if you have a long-form question, you can feel free to email us at FishCastMTG at gmail.com. Our cover art was made by Tessa and Hunter Pruitt, and our logo slash stream art was done by Ishtin. And uh, our animated intro, again, Jake Boss MTG. thank you for killing it in that fashion. You, you did really good with that. Um, and, uh, you can subscribe anywhere you can find podcasts, uh, and it's free. You can find us on YouTube. Uh, make sure to stop by Twitch and, you know, uh, drop a sub there. Uh, that really helps out, especially if you have an Amazon prime account that is free for you. So we appreciate the support in that fashion. We're also at, uh, Patreon at patreon.com slash fishcast Thank you so much, everybody for your time. And we will see you all sometime soon. Have a good night, Jess. Ha, ha, ha.